You will recognise Sophie Morgan from oh, so many things, presenting the Paralympics, fronting Crofts. I loved that. Lo every minute of that was great. She's also one of our loose women who right, celebrated International out. Women's Day with us at ITV. This week, though, Sophie releasing her first ever book. She's looking back at the life-changing car crash, her recovery, and how she's managed to, to turn everything around. It's very aptly, Sophie, called Driving Forwards, because that's kind of what you've done. That is right, isn't it? I, I think it was one of those accidental, brilliant mistakes, the cover, because it is exactly what I do. I've just sort of, since the crash, just kept moving forwards yeah. and, and keep going and keep going and never stop. And it was really wonderful though to stop and write the book and go, right, let's look back and actually yes. see what happened and reflect on it as you do when you write a memoir. Of course you do. Yeah. But what's really interesting, I mean, you're only 18 when this all happened and everybody else in the, in the crash walked away without a scratch, which yeah. is just bizarre. But you call it a crash, not an accident. I do. You're very emphatic about that. Yeah, and deliberate about that. It took a while for me to change that, but I thought the language mattered. And w I did a documentary for the BBC a few years ago, which was about young drivers yeah. and why it was the biggest killer. At the time, driving was the biggest killer of young people. Mm. And it was really shocking because I thought, you know what? My crash, therefore, wasn't an accident. The same things that are happening to, that happened to me are happening to other kids. Right. So I, we explored that. And that's when I decided that the language mattered, that if it... If I called it a crash, that meant that it was a responsibility that needed to be taken for what actually happened. Right. It wasn't an accident. There I were just, contributing factors. I yes. was driving badly, I was distracted, all of those sorts of things. So that's why I call it a crash, not yeah. an accident. I can understand that, yeah. actually. And you you went back, you wrote diaries at the time. I did. So you had to go back and look at those. That, that must have been hard, though. Yeah, it must it have been really hard. tough, you know, to put yourself back there. I think, because, like I said, it... I was, I've always, since the moment I woke up paralysed in hospital, aged 18, I haven't stopped. I've just gone, let's keep going forward, keep yeah, going yeah, forward, yeah. right? So, as I said, looking back, it's very cathartic, mm -hmm. but painful. Yeah. But yeah, I went back into the diaries that I kept when I was in hospital and sat and read them all and thought, right, what do I want to tell people about my experience and what actually happened, what it's like to be 18 years old and to wake up in a body that's entirely different yeah but at the same time still feel that you're grateful to be alive. So it was this kind of weird paradox. I'm, I'm, I'm mourning the loss of my body, but I'm grateful to be alive. And so it, my diaries are filled with these contradictions of, yeah. oh, this is terrible, what have I lost? I've lost the ability to do all these things, mm. but wow, I'm still alive and I love my life and I wanted to regain everything. So the act of looking back and reading those things was quite humbling, quite wonderfully kind of empowering. I thought, yeah. wow, I've come so far. Absolutely. Yeah. What I really like about this book as well is the honesty, Sophie, because you were told, you know, somebody came in and very bluntly told yeah. you, basically, you wouldn't have a sex life. You, yeah. you wouldn't be able to enjoy intimacy. Um, because yeah, of because the of paralysis, because of that. So, so, and you talk about that very openly. I just saw, I took it, and it, this is it's a bit scary in a way because I took it quite a deliberate stance when I started writing the book. I thought if I'm going to get the opportunity to write a book, I really want to unpack what it's like to live yeah. with paralysis because disability gets sort of grouped together. We talk about wheelchair users as one group. We talk about disabled people as one group. And in one hand, that's helpful, and in another hand, it's very unhelpful. And mm. I took the position when I was writing the book. I'm going to tell the story of what it's like to be, have a spinal cord injury right. as a young woman. And that story, I think, deserves to be told, needs to be told. Sure. And so I did, yeah, decide to be brave and say, right, these are the consequences of paralysis. So okay. the secondary complications that come with paralysis are far more, I think, difficult and challenging than the obvious. So people look at you and they think, right, OK, you can't walk. Yeah. And you have to use a wheelchair. And there, there, there are consequences to using a wheelchair that people can understand. Sure. But actually it's the other things, it's the intimacy, it's the way in which your body changes, the, the things that you lose, the, 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 the ways in which your body then has to adapt and mentally you have to reconcile those things mm -hmm. and, and work out what your identity is within them. So yeah, I, I write about sex, I write about all of the things that I lost, I write about the relationships that I lose and the way that they change. So I suppose what I've tried to do is unpack the consequences of paralysis, yeah. but the, not just the negative consequences, but also the positives. Yes. So it starts off with sort of stripping back the things that I lost, but then it details the things that I gained. Mm. So the wonderful relationships I formed with my father, my mother, my brother, my friends, then with myself as I grew up and then my career. And so 
I want people to go on that roller coaster journey with me yeah. to just understand that oh, it's, it, you what do. you think about disability is not necessarily yeah. what it is. Oh, it's really it's such an insight into to what's going on that really I haven't really seen before. I thought I sort of understood it, but of course I can't because yeah. not living it. Yeah. But certainly you get you really do open up. Uh, you're you're going to open up a lot of people's eyes I to so. what it's like. You talked about your dad. You've got a tattoo on your arm. Yeah. That's your dad's handwriting. What does he say? Yeah, it's the title of the book, Brilliant. Driving Forwards, and it's his handwriting. So oh. it's. Just the memory. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's a lovely thing. Thanks. He was so good at just saying to you, get on with it. Yeah, he was. Get on with it. Yeah. And just, you know, seize the day, all of these incredible things. Yeah, and both of my parents were, and most of my friends have that stoicism to just say, right, yeah. we've got you, keep going. And I think, yeah, my relationship with Dad was really sort of, both of, both of the ways my parents reacted when I had my crash were very different. My mum was a nurse, so she was very practical. Right. She knew how to help. Right. My dad... Was, was different in that respect. He, he, we found each other after the crash when I came home and we started having fun together. Dad's a fun lover, he's a party person, right. he loves bringing people together. So that's the side that he sort of helped mm. me bring back. Interesting. Yeah, so we, they, I, I grew f so much because of them both. Um, and that's w a wonderful gift. No, it absolutely yeah. is. And then of course, you've just gone on to, you know, you keep doing bigger and better things. Loved you in Crofts, fantastic. <laughs> Loved the Olympic coverage. Thank you. All of that's really good. Thank Again, a, a great insight into that. Part of the Loose Women team as well. Yeah. And really, you know, really, just breaking down barriers and showing other people who have got a disability no matter what it may be or or just everybody really yeah. it's all of us isn't it yeah. that you know what just it can work out it can work out can. that yours is a very hopeful story don't you think i hope so Lorraine. You know i is? think my i kind of conclude at the end of the book that there's this really powerful um I suppose it, once you get to a point where you say, actually, I don't want to change my disability. Mm. I want to, I love my life. I love the way I exist and the things that I've learned and the perspective I've gained and all of the things that I've benefited from. Yeah. Uh, society often thinks that you would probably rather not be disabled, but I've come to, to realise I don't, feel that way. It's not like that. It, it, it's, it's hard to explain. And again, that's why I put it into well, a book, to sort of try no, and unpack it more Absolutely. articulately. But that idea that it, there is hope and there is so much to be gained from it. And if we can start to see disability in that frame, that it's not always like the pitiful and the awful sort of, you really want to yeah. help disabled people get rid of their disabilities instead of just live with their disabilities and yeah. thrive. And that's what I want my story to to hammer home to people and if I could just leave any reader with that feeling of it's positivity yeah. and you know there is opportunity after adversity no, that's my absolutely. hope. Absolutely, Sophie you have, <laughs> you <laughs> absolutely have. Driving Forwards is out on Thursday um, and it is, it says it's a journey of resilience, it absolutely is, it really is and empowerment. Thank you for Thank coming you. in, good luck with the book, Thank it's, and it's, it's uh, so honest. <laughs> And so interesting. And, you know, I love books that teach me things. <laughs> you know, when I'm reading it and enjoying it and I'm learning things, but I'm not really knowing that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know it's, what you it's mean. great. Sophie, thank you oh, so much. Thanks so much. Great to see you. Thank, thank you. you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations, and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.